Recording start. <laughs> the lease is in Mario's name. So Luigi doesn't own any real estate? Wait, if something happens to Mario, I can imagine that being some messy business. Who does the house go to? <laughs> Goodbye, Mario. I'm flying over you. Oh yeah, top ten intro for sure. I mean, I should probably skip it because I did it last time, but it's cute. What is Kazooie playing if not a kazoo? Onichan Banjo. <laughs> or Banjo. I guess I can't switch pronunciation in the middle of that. Onichan Banjo. Yeah, it's very impressive. She can play a horn without lips. <laughs> and Imolto Turi. Uh, that's, you know, this is why we don't see Tootie and Banjo-Tooie. Spoilers, you don't see Tootie and Banjo-Tooie because the Emoto uh, trope is overplayed. I'll let this finish and then we're gonna resume. You like Tootie's dance? The, the hopping back and forth? If Banjo plays the banjo, why is Mumbo not playing the mumbo? How does one, uh, I don't know. Maybe if he... How do you play? I was gonna say you played yourself, but it's not really the same thing, is it? Now, I'm going to load. Surprise. So this is exactly where we left off last time. Um, boy, settle down, little gator. There we go. Except I broke the barrel or the boulder. I've learned this spell. It's really neat. I'll keep it later for your treat. Sorry, they're not barrel boulder. I broke the boulder off stream because I forgot it existed. Hi, Spooter. Sorry you late, you tired? Oh, you're just in time for some light reading. Cheeto, the spell book you have found. Magic cheats I have for you. Hey, book brain. What did you say? You better not give my spells away. Which lost book finders bear and bird are? Spell they get. We sure do, bag lady. Come on, book boy, give us the spells. Only one spell Cheeto can tell. Enter the code blue eggs on sandcastle floor in treasure trove cove world. Help you it will. Well, thanks, Mr. Cheeto. Hidden in lair other spell books are. Them you should find. <laughs> the gator jumped of its own volition. I did nothing there. Croc is the one PlayStation game you've actually played on PC. Croc 2 is an improvement. You ought to check that out. Doesn't... I feel like I've seen Croc played briefly. I'm trying to remember. There was something odd about how it controlled. Like if it was not fixed perspective. Was it a platform with tank controls? Maybe that was it. Because we really does like calling people X-Boy. It's like she knew that uh, Microsoft would buy out Rare. Even when the Xbox was but a glimmer in the eye of John Microsoft. <laughs> Bag Lady is a very British thing to call someone. Mumbo magic get weak. Magic run out. Oh. You're gonna relax with some Forager and- Hey! I didn't even get to move. With Forager and Disintegrate. <laughs> I've heard Forager is a very pleasantly chill game. Boy, a platform with tank controls. I don't know how that would work. I mean, I've heard people speak of Croc fondly, so apparently it did work. It's just hard to wrap my head around. Is Bag Lady also an Earthbound enemy name? Like an enemy in Foresight, I think? Um, I'm going back this way because I forgot to get a jiggy. And also there's, I think, a ding pot back here. I was thinking about it when I remembered that, oh, I forgot to pound these gooey eyeballs down. I remembered, oh yeah, there's also a warp point in here. Whoa, whoa, settle down. Oh my gosh. Forager is like Animal Crossing, but instead of waiting, you grind. You don't know what it is with this game. You have zero recollection what I did after the first level. I beat Mr. Vile first try. Somebody's got to remember that. 
You've activated a magic cauldron! Fine, too, the same color to create a... Okay, fine. I'll just go kill myself, I guess. <laughs> they speak fondly because of nostalgia, and it should never be revisited lest it be shattered. I know, poor Cauldron. I'm sorry, Cauldron. Oh, that's right, you were here. What were you here for last Spooder Mario Party, I think? Or is it something before that? Anyway, welcome to Banjo Kazooie. Um, I've played this game several times in the past, but I have not played it in a long time. So, most of it's locked in my brain somewhere. Alright, I need to drop down into that that hole back there. Am I gonna use blue eggs? Eh. I might come back when I get a couple more cheat codes and enter them all at once. I don't think I need it right now. Watch me eat those words. I'm gonna run out of out of eggs. Grunty admits she's a hog. I really need a big hot dog. Don't we all? I don't like hot dogs very much, actually. I don't mind turkey dogs, which I'm sure is blasphemous. Is this a platform game with levels and bosses and such? Uh, sort of. Not so much bosses. That's Banjo-Tooie. But with levels and stuff. Yes! Chances are the game went easy on Mr. V on, rather easy on me with Mr. Vile. Only to make Rusty Bucket Bay all the harder for me. Oh, I'll take that as a challenge! No, Rusty Bucket Bay wasn't done. You might be thinking of Clanker's Cavern. Which I think has a similar vibe to Rusty Bucket Bay. Whoosh. Oh, a lot of hot dog hate in the chat today. <laughs> I don't eat... Well, I was gonna say I don't eat red meat very often. But, I mean, who knows what kind of meat is in a hot dog. Am I right, folks? Jokes! <laughs> that was wholly deserved. Rusty Bucket Bay is hell. The platforming inside the ship of Rusty Bucket Bay is unpleasant. Very easy to fall off. Very easy to fall off a lot of spots in that stage. Also, Snacker is there in one, spo uh, one spot. Which, if you don't remember, Snacker was the shark from Treasure Trove Cove that I'm sure traumatized many children. It's not called Rusty... Fit Bay among fans for nothing? My goodness. Okay, I can't get to Sandopolis Zone yet, which is what's in that other uh, doorway. So I'm gonna go this way instead to Ice Cap Zone. I couldn't remember what Gobi's Valley was called yesterday and wound up calling it Sandopolis Zone. So this is now Ice Cap Zone. Can I do anything interesting up here? Uh, let me up. I'm not really looking forward to this one either, to be honest. This stupid quest you should stop! You won't get to me at the top! Okay, I can't make use of that switch in those trainers yet, so I'm gonna ignore it. I will get this Ekum Bokum though. Ekum Bokum! You don't like boiled meat except in Japanese curry. Ow. The name that always gets you mixed up is Jolly Roger's Lagoon, because of Jolly Roger Bay. This is another really silly thing. Uh, hang on. The Peak's got another new move waiting for you if you can find it. Okay, let me talk to uh, these fellas first, and then I'll share my stupid anecdote. Where's our presents? Our dad buggy said he was fetching them. He's been gone ages. Wee. These kids don't get good voices. They don't deserve good voices. These kids are horrible in the sequel, so I don't feel like giving them good voices. Wee. Why do they call their dad by their his first name? That is kind of weird now that I think about it. Okay, stupid anecdote that it made me think of. Oh, hang on, no, there's a fat bear. Uh, my stomach aches. I shouldn't have eaten the shiny thing. Someone help poor Buggy. Well, <clears throat> wait. I guess they call their dad by his name because he also calls himself by his name. 
You just remembered an enemy here. You mean the snowmen from hell? I can hear them now. Ugh. I hate these guys. Just, there's too many things talking that I can't share my stupid anecdote that isn't even that amusing. We're the Twinklies. Protect us from the Twinkly Munchers as we hop across to our tree. If enough of us get there, we can light the tree for you. No, I hate Christmas. Unfortunately, everybody else loves Christmas. Rip. Mm, crunchy and tasty. It's gotta get into a rhythm here. Oh. Rip that guy. Ah, uh, rip that guy again. Man, I gotta hustle here. Nope, rip that guy. <laughs> How many children ate Christmas lights after this game? Hopefully zero. Ah, oh, jeez. I did not time that well. They're so cheerful as they go to their oops, inevitable demise. No! I think I may have donked this up, friends. Oh, uh, I don't know, it's gonna be close. Hurry up, green, you're our only hope. Uh. Tasty lights, those. Try again, bear. We're still hungry. <laughs> and so beautifully timed. That was the most beautiful failure. It's like drowning right in front of one of Gloop's bubbles. Please try harder this time. Here we come. I can't believe I'm getting sassed by some Christmas lights. Maybe I should just let you get eaten. What have you done for me lately? Nothing. Gloop. No, don't roll, Banjo. No. Oh, and I can't swipe it either. And so Christmas was no more, for Mori's hands were so... <laughs> oh, I don't really like Christmas anyway. I'm not just doing that for a bit either, I'm not really a Christmas person. Ah, oh, jeez. 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 No! I gotta stop, like, making it so close for that first one. No! I was gonna say, in my defense, these are harder to hit than it looks, but... No, I'm just... No. Okay. Come on. Go! Once you get over the present aspect of Christmas, it's whatever. Yeah. Oh, that was close, but we made it. Now switch us on. <laughs> you know, the lights could go around? No. We're gonna get their... Oh, I was gonna say feet cold in the snow, but... I don't know, what do you call the bottom of a, of a Christmas light? Their socket? Nah. There we go. The presence is the part of Christmas you just like me too, honestly. Like, the rest... Oops, no. The rest is okay. I want to turn the camera. But the presents... I don't I feel awkward about it. I don't like getting presents because I feel like I don't deserve them. And I don't know, like, trying to find presents for other people is... They're expensive and I worry about it too much. Yippee! Be a star and you'll find your reward. Hurry! No, don't say that. Yes, I see Bottles over there. Bottles can wait. Bottles can, can wait in his little hovel. Typically, you buy what you want. Yeah. Me too. I don't like asking people for stuff. I just feel weird about it. Ugh. I was about to hold down the left trigger to turn sharper, and then I remembered, oh no, that's my Z button. If I do that, I will ground pound and probably injure myself. It'll be very funny, but 
not effective. There we go. You believe in Halloween supremacy? Darn Skippy! Okay, let's ascend this tree. Yeah, that's what would have happened if I had pressed the button. You love presents, but only if it's what, what you want. Most of the time it's stuff you're not fond of, right? And then, you know, I don't want to be, like, ungrateful to people, but just, it's hard to fake being excited about something that, you know, you weren't looking for either. Plus, then it's like, where do I put all this stuff? Aha. Uh -huh. I knew there was a present here. This tree is full of termites. I'm a present. Give me to someone sad. Oh, my anecdote. Okay, it's dumb, but uh, when I talked a couple streams ago about how I would go to the windmill in Ocarina of Time and stand on the rotating uh, platform and go into first person and try to rotate the camera in a way as Link spun around that looks sufficiently cool and cinematic. I also used to fly around Jolly Rogers Bay or Jolly Rogers Lagoon, whatever, in Banjo-Tooie with Kazooie's glide ability to the music and try and do it in an appropriately cinematic way as well. I guess I was a very bored, strange child, so... Now you know! Wasn't that good of an anecdote. I just punched the legs and head off that termite? Well, yeah! I mean, what else are you gonna do to it? Otherwise, it's just gonna come back stronger. I think I might do Tui one day. Probably. If people don't mind Banjo-Kazooie, I don't see why I wouldn't do Tui as well. Hello. Time for some aerial action with my devastating beak bomb attack. Nice one, Goggles. Tell me more. When you're flying, press B to launch Kazooie at a target like a missile. Choose your targets carefully, though, as it costs a red feather each time you use it. You've learned all the moves I can teach you on this world now. Yeah, uh, get ready to smash your face in, Kazooie. And me to smash my face in, like, metaphorically, because uh, I'm not good with the beak bomber. Can you stop? I'm gonna get these notes before I forget about them. I hate, I hate these snowmen. I hate them. They freaked me out when I was little. I don't like being chased by enemies, and these don't chase you exactly, but they're always menacing you. Ooh, stop. Mori versus Canary Mary, the battle of the century. Oh, no! Hopefully it'll go better than it did when I first played Tui, because now I know the trick to the second Canary Mary race, which I did not know at the time. I feel like nobody knew at the time. You need to like the joy of giving? I don't think you're a bad person. I mean... I, get, I think giving stuff to people can be really stressful. But I definitely like giving more than receiving presents. Can I shoot the snowmen back? I can get rid of them if I beak bomb onto their hats. The little red X there. And um, it's not the easiest thing to aim. You mean getting a turbo controller? Oh yeah, literal belly buttons. Uh, okay, backstory. So, Canary Mary is a race that you have to do in Banjo-Tooie twice. Uh, the first time you're racing her in a minecart, and the second, I know, you're racing her on, like, a track in the sky. Point is, so you race her by mashing A, but the second race against her was friggin' impossible. Um, it was not needed to, like, get all the jiggies and stuff to beat the game, thankfully. Um, but the rubber banding on her AI was unreal, and it turns out... Oh, good, I got him. Um, it turns out that if you surpass her too early, she shoots ahead of you and just becomes completely unbeatable. Heck! Uh, um, so what you're supposed to do is, like, just barely stay behind her. But of course, nobody figured that out. Because when you actually race her the first time, um, you just mash as fast as possible to win. So why would you think you have to take advantage of the rubber band AI for the second race? Oh, I hate these guys. Still not as bad as Mario Kart 64 rubber- Ow! Rubber banding. Now this is- 
This is true. Mario Kart 64 rubber banding is... I mean, it's funny if you, um, uh, like, get really ahead of a racer, or the racers in Mario Kart, um, or knock them really far behind, like making them fall off the jump in Wario Stadium. And then you look at the map view, and you see that they suddenly go at unreasonable speeds to catch up. Yeah, their laugh is creepy. I don't... And I don't... Ah, I don't like their faces. Uh, I think there's one more. I think I have to beat them all for a, a jiggy. I mean, if I'm not beating them all for a jiggy, well, at least I don't have to hear their stupid laugh. Ugh. Yes! Uh, let's see. Rubber banding is... Um, it's a term for AI in a game that does better or worse, depending on how you're playing. Um, so, for instance, Mario Kart 64 had very severe rubber banding, where if you got too far ahead of the pack, the AI would suddenly drive much faster than they should actually be capable of in, in order to catch up to you. I think they might also do the same thing if you fall really far behind. Yeah. Speeding up the CPU faster than what the player can go so they can catch up to said player. I think of launching a rubber band, really. The further ahead you get, the, the totter the rubber band is pulled until it snaps ahead and you get past. You know that in Metal Gear Solid 1, the one part where you have to button mash, the game will detect if you use turbo and will automatically make you lose. Oh yeah, don't use a turbo controller at all, no. But it's also possible for a human to just be so good at button mashing that the game thinks you're using turbo. Some speedruns have failed because of that? Uh, is that a failure? I mean, I don't remember if that kills you. I know giving into the torture gets you a different ending. Oh, that's right. I'll see an example of rubber banding later in this level. Well, I don't know what's the most effective way to traverse this stage. I don't remember. Don't fall in the water. It does get you a game over if you use turbo, okay. You can tell the games that don't have rubber banding because you'll either never get past once you're in the lead or never catch up if you fall behind. Yeah, I guess you could think of turbo as also meant- or turbo, no, um, rubber banding is also kind of as a mercy for players if you're falling really far behind, but of course it also goes to make any lead feel meaningless. Boy, I don't get the hiccups now, me. Yeah, just visually imagine a rubber band between you and another person in Mario Kart. When you're far ahead of the AI, the rubber band tries to squeeze back into shape and pulls the cart in the back up. Spooter put that much more eloquently than I did. The items in Mario Kart could be considered rubber banding. I like how you get better items the further back you are. Burr! It's cold! Nice warm backpack for me, too! What about Kazooie? She's gonna have enough space in there. Think of the bird! There's nothing... The snowman didn't drop anything important, did it? No. I remember my brother and I once, in Double Dash, we tried the versus race with just the two of us, and we... Oh, hang on. Ooh, it's safe for Waza to come out now. Not on my watch! Yeah, I'm dropping everything to come over here. Well, I'm really glad I did not fall down that slope, because that would have been embarrassing. No, I need to harass this NPC. Yikes! A nasty, fierce bear! Where are you going? Where are you going? Ah. Um, what was I saying? My brother and I, in Double Dash, we tried the versus mode. Um, and, uh, we set the items to frantic, so the items that you would get would generally be more powerful. And we waited until one of us got a blue shell, and we had that person pull into the lead, because we really wanted to see what would happen if you used a blue shell when you were in first place, which normally probably would not occur when you're racing normally. Um, exactly what you think would happen occurs. 
Never thought I'd resort to bullying a poor walrus for their jiggy. I'm not bullying him. I'm helping him get over his social anxiety. It's exposure therapy. If he doesn't like bear, I will expose him to bear until he love bear. There is only bear. There is no one else but bear. And bird, I guess. You've seen that happen in a normal race? Really? Oh no. Well, I hope... Like, were you actually close enough to the explosion to witness it? I bet it was really funny. <laughs> what do you mean, is that what we're calling it now? That's right, I'm not bullying the walrus, I'm asserting my dominance. Take me to the kids. I'm the last one. Um, the blue shell, yes, attacks you. Or it just... You launch it up, it spins around your head and explodes. Such is life. Ow! Such is ice. Oh no, these things are gonna hassle me where I'm posing. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Koopa Troopa Beach in Mario Kart 64. A friend was behind you and got the shell. Well, he went through the shortcut behind the waterfall to pass you. Oh! It's even Mario Kart 64 where the shell travels along the ground instead of flies in the air. That's right, it's exposure therapy officer, I swear. If you're good enough, you can dodge said blue shell. Well, I think it's not just being good enough, but it's circumstances too. You need to be in a position where you're going fast enough um, to be able to get past it. I have dodged a blue shell a couple times in the past, but it's a very rare occurrence. Mostly what I do is if I see I'm about to be hit and my lead is not super substantial, I will slow down enough to take out someone else with me. If I go down, I'm taking you with me. Double dash, you can dodge it with a red drift boost. I believe that's correct, yeah, but I think you gotta be going fast enough, like at least 150cc. Oh, a coin and a drift boost let you dodge. I totally forgot about the coins in Mario Kart 8 giving you a boost, because it's so long since I've gotten to play it. Miha. Ugh. See, that's also exposure therapy. That's better! Hey, you found my sled! I'll go and practice for the big race now. See ya, buddy! I am exposing the bottom of that sled to his belly. Your blue shell strategy is simply to never be in first. Genius. Also, hello, Claire. I hope you are well. Taking it a sled at full speed to the belly would probably kill you. Well, unless you're a polar bear, obviously. Forget about his kids. Hey, kids, Banjo's your new dad now. See, I even got presents. Unlike your deadbeat father. Wow, thank you, brown bear. Yippee, now we've all got presents. Here's something for you. Ugh, I'm still not giving these kids good voices. Like, they're disgusting menaces in Banjo-Tooie. Can't lose if you never play, Ah. You're counting down the seconds until the way. See, look, I'm already their new dad. Yeah, the Bug Fables Discord is hosting a Mario Kart tournament, but I don't have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I'm so sad. If I could get, like, a cheap copy. I'm kind of eyeballing uh, the remaster of uh, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne as well, but super expensive. That one definitely have to wait for a sale. I'm just going to keep working on Danganronpa in the meantime, I guess. They traded up to a better, dare a better bear dad. It's like you go to the dealership, the bear dealership, and you trade up. <laughs> Hang on, whoa. Make them hold a Splatoon tournament. I wish. I figured you would support the Mega Ten purchase. Banjo is now Boggy's wife's boyfriend. Like, does Boggy know about this? This is an actual polyamorous relationship. Nah, no, Boggy's terrible. We're gonna leave him out of this. If we live in a society. Ooh, a one-up. I'm gonna get it anyway, even though I'm already capped. 
Yeah, huh? I just like the noise that it makes. You're gonna hold off on buying it. Are you also gonna wait for a sale? Yeah, Mega Ten is also a very big time investment. That is true. That's right, Boggy's wife is actually in the next game. Uh, not the most functional of families. Okay, work your magic on me, Skellington Man! Uh -huh. Banjo gone all fat, got big teeth! Uh -huh. Yeah, so? What's wrong with me? I'm beautiful. And I'm warm. Boggy's wife has got it going on. Strange journey pissed you off with the difficult spike. Difficulty spike at the end, yeah. Yeah, oh, that final boss on the neutral route is no joke. Where am I going? I need to get some notes before I harass a walrus. You're gonna snuggle the almond and then sleepy. I was gonna say give almond a pat for me. Maybe like a, a gentle pat along the abdomen? I don't know how much tarantulas like being handled. I've heard they're kind of skittish. Oh, the boss of the, um, the chaos route? Ooh, I forgot. There was a Jinjo back here. Cool. I think the last one is in the walrus's cave, who we are now going to harass. Oh, the final boss in Redux. Okay. How is Redux compared to the original? Because I've only played the original Strange Journey. Does it have a, any sort of New Game Plus mode? So it's easier to see the other endings without having a... Because I think Strange Journey had New Game Plus, right? Mega 10 usually has New Game Plus. New content good? Hey, hey, hey! Whoa, another walrus! Take this! But watch out for a smelly brown bear and his ugly bird partner. <laughs> smelly? Well, when's the last time Banjo is bathed? Well, when's the last time he's bathed in anything other than the sewer water in Clanker's Cavern? That's fair. Why, hello again, Mr. Walrus. Feel free to have a look around Waz's cave. Eh, I can't get up there. I have to come back now that he is no longer guarding the entrance from smelly bears. You can be very gentle and they won't do anything, but if they are disturbed, they'll probably walk away or butt scratch of doom. What is the butt scratch of doom? There is no shower in his house, so it's a bit suspicious. Is this the room? I don't think it is, no, because I wouldn't be able to get here is Banjo. I mean, maybe he takes a dust bath. How do bears bathe in the wild? How could Banjo bathe when his house doesn't have a bathroom? Isn't there something about bears doing their business in a wood? In the woods? Or am I misremembering? Oh, the hair fling! That's right! I forgot, you taught me about that. That tarantulas fling their hair in self-defense. I would not want to startle a tarantula and make it go bald. Oh, this is not where I need to be yet. I like the phrasing, do bears self-clean like cats? They self-clean like an oven, is what I'm thinking of. Okay, where... You're not sure what they were thinking when the whole game you were pushed to use demons of the same alignment only, and then for the final boss, they make it unwinnable if you don't have different alignment demons. Ugh. <laughs> Jumping the gun there. <laughs> Well, it's a- it's not an oven. It's a washing machine, but we'll get there. Oh, that's right! Banjo doesn't live in a forest. He lives in a valley next to a witch's lair. It's way bigger on the inside. That's right. Of course it's way bigger on the inside. This is a British game. Alright! You found all a hundred notes on this world! Well done! Yeah, who cares about you, Bottles? Hey, Mr. Wilbur, fancy a race? Hop on the sled if you do! Ah, uh, yeah. 
I can't get my Mario Kart fixed, so I have to do this. Great, now all you need to do is steer your sled through the red slalom gates and beat me to the end. Got it? Three, two, one, go! Yeah. Oh, maximum speed. There he is! Oh, there it is. Well, hey! There it is, everybody. Can I get some wahays in chat? I will never ask for anything in chat again. <laughs> wahay, thank you. Oof. This is the precursor to Hi, I'm Daisy. Move, you fat bear butt. Yeah, I, I know this race is very rubber bandy. If you fall behind, it's pretty easy to catch up. But, uh oh, on that note. Ah! I'm stuck! But. Faster! You're not trying back there! I got stuck under a bridge! Please have mercy. Yeah. Move, move, move! Go, go, go! Yeah! I look over the chats filled with wahays. Thank you, everyone. You've made me so happy. Ooh, you're too quick for me, Mr. Walrus. Here's your medal. I reckon I need to race someone my own size. <laughs> what? Oh. Why do they call it oven when you oven the cold food of out hot eat the food? <laughs> yeah, it's an ultimate tongue twister. So there is another race with Boggy that you do as Banjo, but I cannot do it yet. I need the Turbo Talon Trot, which is those running shoes. Um, but I am going to get that Jinjo. Once I... Go back to Mumbo. I feel like I'm turned around. Which way, Mumbo? Mumbo, Mumbo, this away. Kazooie feet too slow. You're too slow. I can't. I can't do a Sonic voice. If I'm still considering playing the Sonic game, which I am, by the way, you nominate Sonic Adventure One on account of Gamma. Gamma is like the best theme song in that game. Like, it's different than anything else in that game. It sounds real good. But, well, no, Knuckles has a really good theme song, too. I would consider Sonic Adventure not just for Gamma, but because it's a mess. And I think it's a fun kind of mess to share with people. Gamma's theme is nice. Um, I'd recommend looking it up after the stream if you've not heard it before. And, like, a game that's full of, like, butt rock, for lack of a better word. Well, give me a chance! Give me a chance! Okay. Walrus is this way. Oh, you're nominating Sonic Adventure for the Froggy? I mean, a uh, Froggy! <laughs> it's the, my best Big the Cat impression. Stream the entire standalone Blue Sphere mode, like, when you link... Sonic 2, yeah, Sonic 2 to the Sonic and Knuckles game pack. I played a lot of that once, thinking it had an end, but no, it just goes on forever. Ugh, the bear again! Take that noisy orange thing with you and leave poor Waza alone. There we go. There's a mod for the PC port to combine the better parts of the Dreamcast version with the DX port. Oh, good. Because I've heard the uh, the PC port is kind of a... It's like the Steam version is kind of a mess. Weird. A key. Made of ice. Huh. I wonder what that is. Probably nothing. <laughs> it's the noisy orange thing, the Jinjo or Kazooie. <laughs> Depends on your perspective. Yes. That's right, yes. Your mind was blown when you found out that Big the Cat was voiced by John St. John, the voice of Duke Nukem. I seem to recall reading that, like, he hates that voice, too. Like, 
I don't know if he regrets voicing Big the Cat. I might be misremembering, but he is um, not fond of the whole thing. But Scratch of Doom sounds like something you could use as a yearbook quote. I mean, why not? Okay, let me out, let me out. There's a guy who streams himself playing the Blue Sphere mode. He has played Blue Sphere mode for 24 hours and reached stage 2,222 once. Criminy. Why don't I stop this world and swap to another world? How very specific. I like the Blue Sphere mode. Like, not, you know, the in infinite one per se. But out of the special stages in Sonic 1, 2, and 3, I'm best at the Blue Sphere one by far. I can deal with Sonic 2 special stages. I've gotten all the emeralds before. I think, do I have to egg to do this? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've activated your trap card. Um, it might take me a couple tries to get, like, the last one. Because there's a lot of, like, suddenly bombs in the special stages in Sonic 2. But Sonic 1's special stages just hurt my eyeballs, and I don't like them. That's like leveling up to 99 on the Destiny Islands at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> Has someone done that? Probably. The disgusting Gruntilda has rat bagels for breakfast. Then she usually has slug stew for dinner. Yuck. Protein. Wartbags then finishes with rat sorbet for dessert. How horrid. Oh, you poor dear, your energy is low. Let me fill it up for you. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> rats. We're rats. We are the rats. We bake at night. We stock at night. We are the rats. You like Blue Sphere's music? I do too. It's got a nice tropical kind of feel to it. There's the note door I want. I could go to the 450 note door, but I want to unlock Sandopolis zone. Rat for breakfast and rat for dessert. I don't think that's a balanced diet. Batman's diet for Robin. <laughs> What are the special stages in Sonic Rush 2 like? I've played the first Sonic Rush, but not the second one. Sonic 2 special stages are so bad. I think it's partially because of their frame rate. They would be better if the frame rate was a little better. Like, the special stages in Sonic uh, CD are butts, to use a technical term. And I think partially because the frame rate is low enough and it's really easy to misjudge your jumps against the robots you're trying to destroy because depth perception? What is it? We just don't know. Um, but... What? My next world is the hardest yet! And you will fail on that, I'll bet! Oh look, Theta, gambling. You like gambling. Just for you. You had to find a robot named Johnny and race him. Oh, like Chrono Trigger. You like the Sonic Mania bonus stages. There's a Sonic Robo Blast 2 cart track based on one of these. I don't need to go to Mad Monster Mansion yet. I don't think I can do anything in here yet. I think it's just the level opening and then this, which I don't think I can open yet. Unless I tackle it to open it. No. You always thought Batman subsisted off his enemies' fears and tears. Well, yeah, that's that's Batman. Robin, Robin, Robin has the rat diet. You remember seeing a comment on a video of all the Sonic 2 special stages that was along the lines of, I'm studying for this instead of my finals. Gotta remember to break the gate by Mad Monster Mansion. Somebody remind me to do that when I go back there for real. Where's the really tiny death platform? This is it. I think you need to go here as the... The transformation we'll get in Mad Monster Mansion, though, not as Banjo. So I think there's a tiny hole there that I won't fit in. You find it hilarious how much people are scared of spiders, even though you can literally wave your hand in front of Almond and she wouldn't mind. Well, I think a lot of fears are irrational. 
And, I mean, people probably have their own reasons. I am curious as to why it's a very common one, relatively speaking. I'm not sure. Wait. You definitely have no memory of this location? I feel like my knowledge of Grunty's lair here is always kind of spotty, too. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's it! You've created a shortcut! Hop in and see! I think there's definitely more to it than simply... Uh, like, it, like, I know spiders are relatively docile, but there's definitely different reasons as to why people might not like them. Where am I going? Sendopolis zone. This way. Jellyfish are a lot scarier. I mean, I would never want to get stung by one. They're nice to look at, though. Terribly rude, though, if we go by Spongebob, uh, rules. Like, partying in his house for eternity. Oh, where are the boots? Boots, boots, boots. Here? They wouldn't hesitate to kill. Oh, yes, also deadlier. What's even scarier? Cone snails. Spiders and jellyfish have nothing on cone snails. It's so weird, you know, Banjo-Kazooie is considered one of the best platformers, and you're like, yeah, I can't remember the middle of it. <laughs> I mean, my knowledge of Gruntilda's lair, as I mentioned, is kind of spotty in parts. Hello. Grunty's best friend at witch school was the awful Sweaty Betty. When relaxing, she usually reads Big Butts and Guts magazine. Ooh. Okay. While sipping a glass of her favorite smoothie elephant sweat. Well, it's like globe and sweat, basically. You hate snails and the like because they par parry they carry parasites. Meanwhile, you remember Sesame Street for the N64 really well? I didn't know there was a Sesame Street game on the N64. Although I feel like I know there was a PlayStation one, so I guess I should have assumed. You'll find one more move in here, Banjo! Mm. Oh yeah, some quality tunes in here. Elmo's Letter Journey, there's a tass of it? Of course there is. Big Butts and Guts magazine is the best. I don't know if Brentilda should be talking about this in an all-ages stream, though. <laughs> all-ages stream. No. No. I don't say the bad words, but... <laughs> Ticks bring dishonor to the spuddy name. You really remember counting with Dracula? One. One bad word. Ah, ah, ah. Number journey. There's more than one? You can swear a cuss yourself. Diaper biscuits. That wasn't the right accent. Whatever. Mm, before I fly off. Aha. It's hard not to just gush about the soundtrack of this game, because it's good stuff. My nose is all blocked up. Your dose is all blocked up. You should go to, like, a shady back alley and get that looked at. Hey, that tickles. Spiders are scary to you just because of how they look slash move. You've gotten stung by a jelly and it was not fun. Oh my! What's it like getting stung by- yeah, a jellyfish. Also, hello, J. Phelps music, am I saying that right? If there's something you prefer to be called, please let me know. If I could aim- there we go! Oh, gross. Not the dose! <laughs> that clear Jinxie's nose! Come on in! I guess. You didn't have Elmo's number journey, but you did have Math Blaster 1 and 2 on the PC. I never got to play Math Blaster. I have a soft spot for old edutainment games, but I never got to play that one and I'm very sad. Camera. Oh, gotta make sure I get those notes on my way back out. Bleh. Jellyfish are cool, but scary. Yeah. I think we must view jellyfish with sort of an odd reverence and an understanding of what havoc they can they can wreak. And also they just go bloop bloop real well. Please. 
There we go. You really love number journey, even though it was nothing but adding and subtracting. I think there's something satisfying about doing simple arithmetic. I don't know why. I just, I like making numbers balance. The noise these carpets make make me think of the ghost ropes from the uh, forest levels in Donkey Kong Country 2. You hear it, right? If you've played that game. Dead jellyfish make for good band t-shirts. Oh, I wish Dak was here. I'll have to tell him that later. Wow, whoa, 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 ow. These are like the, the floor masters in Wind Waker. In the, um... What temple is it you go through with Makar? The Earth Temple? Or is that the one you do- or is that the one you do with Medley? I suddenly can't remember. Wind Temple, there we go. Yeah, Earth Temple's the one you do with Medley. Parents trying to get you to learn Numbles or you- Numbles? <laughs> Numbles is my Banjo-Kazooie original character. Numbers when you were a baby. How dare they. They are in the Earth Temple too, but I mostly remember them being a bigger menace. In the Wind Temple with Makar. Oh, there's so many things here. Oh, I should actually go back to that uh, flight pad on top of what's-his-face here. Jinxy? Yeah. I really love the variable mix that you get in uh, not just this game, but Banjo-Tooie and Donkey Kong 64 as well. I guess that's another kirk hope -ism. The Forsaken Fortress on my second visit. Parents should do their own accounting and leave their babies alone. Have a good one, Bubbly. Take care. Don't make your don't let your parents make you do all the accounting. <laughs> Get in there. Get in there. Summon all the hidden rings of the ancients to beat the witch. Okay, I don't really see how these correlate, but I'll do it. I do like flying through hoops. This is reminding me that I should stream Wind Waker at some point. Where is the next fella? All right, there's a honeycomb piece in this cactus. Oh, it's not there yet. I thought there was a honeycomb piece there. Ah, dang it. Touch my honey this time and you'll be sorry. I'm sorry because I lost my flight. Jeez. I guess it doesn't appear there yet. Well, egg on my face. Are you making Superman 64 jokes in the chat? I should have seen this coming. Oh, this is... Yeah. Yeah. You were reading and doing math before you went to school. It wasn't aware you could do either until kinder for reading and first for math. Like, you just sort of took it for granted that you could? Let me in, let me in, let me in. Oh, you're not in. Whatever. Hang on. There we go. You know, I've never even, like, seen footage of Superman 64. I've just heard about it talked and I've heard it talked about in... Oh, hush tones. There we go. Oh, give you a game you could read text? Give you a book you don't know what it's saying? Interesting. I wonder why that is. No, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah, heck mummies. Not give me the Eakin Bokum. You played it, but you didn't become aware of its reputation until years later. You played it, though. So is it as legendarily terrible as everybody says? I guess I should maybe pay attention to this, huh? Chalk it up to you being stupid. I don't think that's it. I think... 
I know it's interesting that there is a disconnect in your brain um, between the text in games and the text in a book. My parents used to read to me all the time when I was little, so I learned to read fairly quickly, I think. But I still had difficulty with more advanced concepts, like I would watch my dad play Link to the Past because I couldn't really follow some of the specifics of the dialogue. Ah, oh, jeez. Archaeologists recommend butt slamming ancient architecture. This is correct. I am an archaeologist. I have decided that just now. There's more than just the rings. There's lengthy stages based on really bad controls and combat. Oh no. You think you might have played it at a friend's house and you used cheats to get later in the game. You don't remember it having much of an impact on you at the time. And maybe you hadn't... I'd say you hadn't played enough games to get a, a feel for how bad it is. You haven't expanded your palette enough. But no, you would have already played a lot of games by that time. Dang, I remembered all those places. Is that good? Did I do good with the memory matching game? <laughs> I can remember a lot, as long as I don't get distracted, which um, is the, the difficult part. Oh, thank you! Um, it's like at my job, I can remember very complicated orders with several items in them, as long as I don't get distracted while I'm trying to uh, recall what they are. Like, sometimes people will do online orders, and, I don't know, like, someone, someone will come and take the wrong drink, or whatever. Um, and then the correct person will come and be like, oh, do you have a drink for so-and-so? And I'm like, oh wait, we did, but I think someone else with that name took it, and they're like, oh no, um, I'll, I'll rattle off the order, and I'll like, oh, was it a, a this with this and this, this, this? And they're like, yes, how did you remember that off the label? I'm like, I, I don't know, it's just in there. You remember being fully aware of what was going on in Majora's Mask as a kid. How old were you when you played Majora's Mask? Like, ballpark. A good skill to have? Yeah, I think... I mean, it's a good skill to have in theory, but not a lot of application. <laughs> For you, the main issue wasn't reading game dialogue, but rather taking the time to actually pay attention to it and understanding what was going on. Yeah, I think that was my problem, too. It's like I could read it, but actually putting together what all these words meant? That's a lot harder. Blah. Uh, this, this whole bit now is kind of scary. It's really easy to fall off here. Lehat. Three or four? That's a little young to be playing a game about the end of the world. You can't really appreciate the puzzles and lore in Mr. Riven because you grew up reading the strategy guide and you just know the game. It's a different way to experience it, though. I mean, maybe you can appreciate the details of the world around you better because you're not always thinking in the back of your head, oh, what, what do I have to do to solve this or that puzzle? Or I have to remember this location later? Or I don't know if I'm making sense, but... Hang on. I'm gonna go back to that flight pad. And not to mention all the death and despair. I find Majora's Mask is harder for me to go back to. Not because it isn't a great game, because it is, but it just... It makes me sad. So much of Majora's Mask just has, like, this visceral sad feeling to me. And there's bits in the game that I just I struggle with. Like, the Gorons. All the Gorons starving and freezing to death. You know, to say nothing of the fact that baby Goron is very irritating. Yeah, yeah, that. But okay, there he is. You got it in the states a year after release. He would have been four. Goodness. Get in there. Get in there. Thread the needle. This is why you use glitches and tricks to avoid said Gorons. I'd rather play the game as intended, though, even if it makes me sad. Even if I have to listen to the obnoxious baby Goron crying. Uh -oh. 
Oh, I was flying through targets, but I guess I have to do this. Uh, let me fly through the other targets, and then I'll just hit that again. I don't really like using glitches to skip parts of a game. Only joking, mortal. We can only give you this. Uh, thanks, I guess. You've played so much Majora's Mask, you can't play it without using some sort of sequence break. Really fun having all the masks before you set foot into the swamp. How do you acquire all of the masks before setting foot into the swamp? Are you using uh, some sort of glitch to trick the game into thinking your inventory is full? Have a good one, Spooter. Have a nice sleepy. Give Almond my regards if she allows it. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. 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 I don't think I'm gonna make it, lads. Huh. Oh. <laughs> you have no idea what was going on in Majora's Mask as a kid. You just remember you love the music so much. That is also valid. That is a fine way to play it. No, no. Only we sand eels can survive in here. Ow! Very well use glitches to get all the masks, you're sure. You know, there's a glitch to fill your inventory with nothing but ocarinas when you start the game. I like to imagine, in doing that, every time Link plays a song, he smashes the ocarina on the ground. Like, they're single use. Go back in time 24 times at the same time. Back before Link is even born and he erases himself from existence. Is that where steel eels come from? Yes, this is the precursor to Splatoon 2. All you would have to do is then use other glitches to override the masks. No, I think it's funnier if Link just has an inventory of nothing but ocarinas. Can I get a carpet here? Hello, taxi. There we go. Majora's Mask came out when you were in middle school, and you remember getting so annoyed when classmates called it Zelda 2. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you- were you that guy? Did you correct them about what Zelda 2 actually is? Uh-oh. Yeah. I gotta be careful here. I don't wanna die. I have to get all these notes again. Shortly after Banjo Tooie, the world floods. Yes. So there's like a Zelda timeline. But I want a timeline that links all of Nintendo's games together. They must all be connected somehow. I would sing that, but I don't quite remember the tune for Arabian Nights. Like, it's, it's in my brain, but I... Wait, no, I need to go back up here. But I feel like I would get it wrong if I attempted it. I haven't seen Aladdin in a long time. I haven't seen any Disney movie in a long time. What was the most recent one I've seen? I remember a couple years ago watching Mulan on a flight. Was Coco Disney? I think it was. I saw that in a flight too. Mario first appeared in Donkey Kong. Banjo and Conker were in Diddy Kong Racing. Meaning Banjo and Conker's Bad Fur Day are in the Mario universe. Correct. Oh, Coco was Pixar. What am I thinking of? Well, Pixar is, you know, part of Disney. It's basically the same thing, right? Let me in. Let me in. And for the Zora's Mask, you can get it early by placing a bomb down by the fence to the ocean. And timing your Goron slam so that the bomb blows up while you're in midair. Oh, it's like it's like Metroid. You're bomb jumping, basically. Typically, you would flip back into the mountains, make your way to the Goron mask, dip over to the beach, and then... Hello, my friend. I am Ruby. Can I be of some help? No? We're looking for treasure, pipe boy. Very good. I see some up there. It's yours if you can get it, yes? Because, oh, I mean, why do you have to be... Needlessly hostile to everyone. Uh, 
Aladdin was the movie you watched nonstop as a kid. That and Jingle All the Way starring Arnold. Oh man, with the Turbo Man action figure. I feel like every kid must have like a, a book, or not a book, a movie they fixate on. Maybe a book too, but I read all sorts of books. So I didn't really fixate on one. Come on. Link and Samus made cameo appearances in Mario RPG, thus making them part of the Mario universe. Yes. Oh, a thousand thanks! My friend Histop will now help you with your quest. Hang on. What? Wait. What a cute snake. Nothing like Clayton's death to traumatize a child. You mean... The hanging in the vines? I'm just appreciating the snake and this music. Oh. What is what is this thing? It sighs sometimes. And he pats it. Come on, do it. It's a globo, it's a deflated globo. There we go. There's the sigh. You have a strong fear of heights now. What, you don't like snakes either? You watched Toy Story, The Lion King, and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie on loop as a kid. Is it King Jingling's pet? I don't remember what his pet looked like. Oh yeah, bottles. It's an anteater. It is all of these things simultaneously. These are the running shoes. Beaky wears them on her scrawny feet to make her run really fast for a limited time. Hmm, your energy is a little... That's it? That's all you're gonna tell me? Well played, Banjo. You've now learned all the moves in the game. Really? So we never see you again? We'll never hear Kazooie's needlessly acerbic insults towards you anymore? You don't like anything that can slither around your neck and pierce your skin. That's fair. What? How is putting on a pair of shoes a move? We'll see what bottles really taught Kazooie is how to tie her shoes. Do I need the shoes to actually get up here in time? I think I do. Yeah, because you start that panel just by stepping on it instead of ground pounding. Um, where are the shoes? There's a pair of shoes somewhere. Not those shoes. Grunty! Race you cannot beat until you find some faster feet! Alright, alright, alright. Fear of snakes is a perfectly understandable fear. Hmm. Boogie is Australian, so she would know what she's talking about. Your nephew loved watching Zootopia when they lived with you. You've only ever seen the last 15 minutes, but you've seen it 50 times. Oh. I feel like that's kind of like me and the Matrix and that my dad has seen that movie so many times and I have it's okay it's not exactly the same but I've seen like the last half of that movie so many times but I've only ever seen the beginning of it like once and I didn't see the beginning for years oh, it's too hot for Gobi I need some shade please help me you free Here's your reward, Bear Gobi's off to cool down. We'll never see him again. <laughs> Not as a toddler, no. I was pretty young, though. When did The Matrix come out? 99? So pretty young. But yeah, what is what were my obsessive movies when I was little? Yeah! I wasn't expecting you to vanish. No, let me up, let me up, let me up. No. Please. Uh, um, when I was little, I watched a lot of Toy Story. Um, I don't know if they still do it, because I haven't watched TV in a long time, but the Canadian network, uh, um, the CBC, would air, like, family movies on Sunday nights. And one night it was Toy Story. And I hadn't seen Toy Story in years, but I realized I still remembered, like, all the, like, major beats and dialogue and whatnot, just because I had seen it so many times. Um, 
I also watched Rockadoodle a lot, as my parents ruthlessly made fun of me for. Which, if you're not familiar with, it's a Don Bluth movie. And I think his animated films already have the reputation for being really weird. But Rockadoodle's pretty weird. Actually, I can even say weird by his standards. Because, I mean, all of his movies are, like, really... Well, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna describe it. That's a whole other can of worms. This is King Sandy Butt's tomb. Turn back or face his wrath. Matrix is 99. You chose not to heed our warning. Prepare to run. Um, I think there's a grunty switch in here that I also need. Ooh. I don't remember where it is. such goofy music. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, panic music. Mm. It's not here, is it? No, heck. Move, move, please, move, please. Oh, it was over there, and I just... No, the bear survived! He's after the king's ancient rel- Oh. <laughs> so it goes back as soon as I go back in there. <laughs> I was wondering if it was in that other corner, but the camera didn't move, so... I'll go back and get it after I get this. Rockadoodle was late, Bluth. What was Don Bluth's first movie? Like, were they always that... Um... I really hesitate to use the word fetishy. Please understand that I hesitate to use it, but if you've seen some of his movies, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. You once read why and you think it's speculated because little kids like predictability and it's satisfying to see things play out the same way every time. Yeah, I could see that. Okay. Let me go back the way I came from and get that switch. Excuse me. I don't think this is correct, is it? Oh, maybe it is. Yeah. He worked with Disney until he got mad and left, but you think his first movie was Secret of Nim? Oh, Secret of Nim was creepy. I haven't seen it in a long time, but it was... It was definitely spooky times. For you, you hate the song that's in Sandy Butts, too, because it fills you with so much anxiety. Oh, yeah, it does a good job of the way it speeds up. Sonic Drowning music has nothing on this. I think we had a copy of the book. Mrs. Well, the book is Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. I hadn't read it, though, but they, the movie was changed to Mrs. Brisby. Or, rather, the movie is just The Secret of Nim, but the character's name is Mrs. Brisby because they didn't want to run into copyright issues with Frisbee, I guess. Where the heck are those shoes? I think there are also notes down below, maybe? Are there notes down below, or is there just pain and suffering down below? You gotta know. Sonic Drowning music leaves a scar that'll never fade. I was never bothered by it. I think because... Uh oh well, I'm down here now. Oh, heck. Okay, this... Oh, there's a flight pad here, but I need to come down here with boots. Oh, I should, I should, like, break a beehive or I'm gonna die. Is there another way down there, though? Because if I come down where there were, there were the boots, the fall damage would get me. Oh, I need to open the other pyramid first. Okay. No! Don't laugh in my face, you stupid beetle. DK64's Get Out still feel, fills you with dread. Oh, me too. Me too. I hate, I hate the Get Out. Like, I I never got 100% in Donkey Kong 64 for a few reasons, but one of them was that, like, the huts in the Crystal Caves spooked me so badly with the get out that I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Probably do it now, but I'd still be really nervous about it. Oh, here's some shoes. This tree looks a bit thirsty, but I need all my water for myself. Oh, we can't be having that. Gross. 
Ah, lovely water. Trunker feels great. Oh, the shoes are next to the other boots. That's what I kept thinking. Can I climb you? No, I can't. I have to jump on you. You are not a fan of the giant, the crush, the giant crusher? Where is that? I have to think about it. But yeah, I don't think the Sonic Drownic music ever bothered me because um, in Chemical Plant Zone in Sonic 2, uh, there's a bit near Act 2 where you have to climb this little segment with rotating blocks. And I would screw it up continuously. Um, or you climb the segment with falling blocks and then you have to jump on these moving platforms to cross the uh, water, for lack of a better word, to get to the boss. But it's really easy to fall when you're trying to do that. And if you fall, then you have to do that bit with the rotating blocks underwater again. And I just got so used to hearing the drowning music off and on that it didn't bother me. There they are! Oh, and crystal caves. Go, 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 go. Took you a while to remember, think of what you watched a lot of as a kid, but Fern Gully in the land before time! Or a couple of them. Give me that. No! Grandma's got a jiggy. Nah, 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 nah. Give me. No! I've had that a thousand years! Well done, mortal. Oh. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. The giant crusher that makes some, um, like, uh, uh, I was gonna say meteors fall, but not that. Like, rocks fall down. I forgot about that guy. I hate that guy. Because he makes that level needlessly stressful. What do you mean that's just mean? He was hoarding it. It needs to go back out in the wild where it can be appreciated. Stealing his thousand-year-old treasure. Well, he wasn't doing anything, was it? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Ow. Maybe I should break that other beehive. Stalactites? Maybe that was it. But yeah, it made that whole level needlessly stressful. Aside from the get out. Sorry bees, sorry bees. You hated dealing with things you can't kill, like Mimi. Yeah, Mimi was pretty spooky. For me, it's not so much being unkillable, but I don't like being chased in games. Do I have to watch this cutscene, please? Like, being chased in games stresses me out really badly. I've never played a Resident Evil, but I think I would struggle with, like, Nemesis just popping out of nowhere to, um, menace you. Oh, I'm not gonna make it because of that freaking cutscene. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, I'll get this note that I missed. And I'll try again. Ow. Mimi could bite you whoever gave the clear for that hates children. <laughs> you can beat that crusher with the shock attack that you get from the banana fairy queen. Yeah, like, the, the one where you hold down the B button, and it does that big shockwave. I forgot that attack existed. Deep water terrifies you. Oh, I don't like... I don't like swimming in deep water in games. Just the, the fear of drowning. I remember when Mario 64 was um, announced, and I was looking at, you know, pre-release footage, and I was very confident that, well, they're not going to have an underwater level like they do in, say, Mario 3. Because Mario has an oxygen meter, so obviously they wouldn't set a whole letter level underwater, right? Oh my gosh, the timing for this is really tight. Go, go, go! Are you kidding me? Ugh! Is there some way to do this faster that I'm missing? <laughs> Oops. Oh, this game and its fall damage. Ruthless. Yet, I'm not bothered by the drowning music in Sonic. I guess I just accept it as an inevitability. Jump more. I think I think that may be it. 
in some games it's faster to jump, and some um, it's only faster to jump if you jump again immediately upon landing. I remember reading about this for Super Mario World speedruns. Oh, I don't. That was no, not fast enough. Yeah, the fa the cutscene wasn't mandatory. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. In the meantime, tell me all about what moments in games spooked you. Or elements in games, doesn't have to be a specific one. Since you already know that I don't like being chased. It's another moment in a game that filled me with a lot of foreboding. Hmm. Get in there! Yes! Woo! There we go. We did it. What freaked you out most about Mimi was the Mimi me, 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 me text box that suddenly appears when she enters the room you're in. Ooh, spooky. Jet Force Jim and I gave you nightmares for years. You hated the it's you hated inside the body levels as a kid. And that game is a really intense one. I don't remember it all that well. I remember renting Jet Force Jim and I. It was one of those games I wondered if I would get in trouble for playing it because there's blood. All right, okay, yeah. I forgot. The water drains out in here. Pamela's father from Majora's Mask always scared the living daylights out of you. Oh, yeah, he's creepy and sad. Majora's Mask is very good at being both frightening and indescribably melancholy. Andros in Star Fox 64. Yeah, he's pretty creepy, too. There's this old, old game called The Ultimate Haunted House for the PC. It's not really a scary game, but you had night terrors from that game. Goodness. I mean, it's like, uh, like again, fear isn't always rational. And I know certainly unusual things have given me some trouble down the line. Give me the Ikumbokum. Ikumbokum. You typically don't like water worlds, but Donkey Kong 64 had a nice water world. Was that... I, I want to say Glimmer's Galleon, but that was a level in Donkey Kong Country, too. Was it something Galleon? Does anybody remember what the water level in Donkey, or Donkey Kong 64 was called? Hang on, I'm gonna... Refuel! A gloomy Galleon, okay, that's why I'm thinking of Glimmer's Galleon. Spooky's House of Jump Scares and Nerves You, but that game is nothing but being chased by unkillable things. Yeah, that, that game, I can't... Even the mini jump scares, I can't do. I'm missing notes, right? I think. I'm missing two notes, my god. They're probably like in a corner of the map somewhere. Are they down here? Oh, they're down here. There isn't one behind me, is there? Or is it in front of me? Wouldn't it be terrible if it wasn't here? <laughs> it's just in the level somewhere. There it is. I I do like um, the DLC for Spooky's House of Jump Scares. Um, where there's like this clown that chases you. I say chase is very loosely. You never see it move, but it's just whenever you turn and look, it's closer to you. But it never hurts you. It's just there. <laughs> it's terrifying, but hilariously so. The movie that scared you most as a kid was Mystery Men. So you definitely have experience getting scared by unusual things. I feel like I've seen that, but I don't remember any details of it. Oh, my night terrors almost made you run out of your house. Jeez, those are no joke. I consider myself very lucky that I had, don't suffer th from them to my knowledge. What do you want? Tootie's fate is looking grim. It's because her brother's dim. Yeah, but he's nice. It's all fun and games till Walmart Happy Mask Salesman chases you in Spookies. The one where if you get caught by him, it's the... the, the needle in the eyeball. 
Goodness me. The scariest part of Mystery Men is that it introduced the world to the song All Star. Did it? I don't remember that. I mean, I'd buy it, but... Hang on, wait, I need to break this webbing first. Uh, when I was out for a walk earlier in the week, um, this, like, red car sped past me, blaring, like, a dance remix of All Star from its speakers. Wait, does this... Oh. I don't have to break... Oh, I do break this one, okay. There we go. All Star debuted in Mystery Man. Well, I'll be darned. There's a part in Mystery Man where someone's face gets distorted in an uncanny 90s CGI way and it freaked you out so much. Ooh, that would sound really uncomfortable. Well, I hope you don't have to suffer any night terrors for a long time. I don't know how to phrase that in a way that's constructive, but, you know, I'm, I hope you're able to successfully manage stress where they're not an issue, because that sounds awful. It gave you a highly specific fear of CGI I was gonna say f a space distortion. It's not quite right. Face distortion. I know sometimes there are faces that are so... <sighs> sometimes there are faces that are so grotesque I can't bear to look at them. <laughs> Every morning at work... One of the songs they play over the speakers is a dance remix of All Star and you want to die every time. I've got this skirt so when I'm thinner, it really makes me look a winner! I guess plan for the wardrobe that you want to wear. Go, go, go. I don't exactly remember. I have to break, like, one of the eyes here? Okay, other side. One of them is glass. I'm not crazy, I swear. Or did I already break it? There we go. The scariest moment for you was so dumb. It was in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Go on. I'm not here to judge, incidentally. I know... I've gotten freaked out by all sorts of different things. There we go. Took me a long time to realize this is like a little advent calendar. Isn't it cute? <laughs> Hi, Don. I thought you said I'm here. Help. That's a, that's a normal reaction to a Mori stream, I think, is help. I didn't have to do that. But no, I did. <laughs> what is it you do, Andorra, where they play a dance remix of all dance remix of All Star every morning? You don't have to say if you'd prefer not to. Um, where am I going? All right, I need to go back into Freeze Easy Peak. Speaking of hitting water levels in Banjo Tooie, you'd always explore the full map before playing as Mumbo. Which meant you played the entirety of Jolly Rogers Lagoon before playing as Mumbo. Oh no! Jolly Rogers Lagoon is really stressful for me. Um, especially the one where there's some jiggy you have to get where you're protecting, I think, like a, a diving pig from fish. But, and like, anything you have to do where you're underwater in that game just freaks me out. A little buggy. Ow! What the heck? You remember why salesperson- salesman never killed you in Spooky? As long as you look at him, he doesn't move. Ah, uh, retail. Yeah, that would explain it. Sometimes I hate our work playlists, but... Hey, buddy! Fancy a race against Boggy? Press A to accept or B to chicken out. Okay, buddy. Here's the rules. Run through the red slalom game. Blah, 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 blah. Why are we buddy? I'm like the better version of you. Faster! You're not trying back there. I'm 
going as fast as these little chicken legs can carry me. Jeez. I want to read the chat, but I better I better focus on this. Out of my way. I'm gonna get stuck under a bridge again. No! No! Ah, heck. This is too easy. I'm giving up. Yeah. <laughs> a fighter called Q shows up after a fight with a really low random chance. And not scary, but when it happened, you skip five heartbeats because it took up, because it took up the whole screen. Oh no, that would that would terrify me. I'll try to make it close this time. Go away, buggy. Go away behind me. Um, but I actually find like screen filling messages. Um, or anything like in large scale and really stark black and white to be really startling and uncomfortable for me. Um, like, like say that the you are died messages you get. Sorry, you are, you are dead and you died messages. <laughs> the, the you are died messages you get in Dark Souls and Resident Evil freak me out. No, heck. I deserve that. Um... Or like, uh, speaking of Donkey Kong 64's Get Out, there's, in the game I played a while ago, Paradise Killer, there's these military barracks, heck, you can enter in that you're not supposed to be in. And if you go in there without taking care of the guards first, I have lost. <laughs> if you go in there without taking care of the guards first, you get caught and thrown out with like a big Get Out written in white on a black screen and it freaks me out. I am dying here. You are died. I'm die. Thank you forever. I wasn't gonna bring out Korone this time, but <laughs> well, it's Korone and Mori, so how can I not? You're imagining the cue from Star Trek. It's Street Fighter. <laughs> that actually, it's like something screen feeling that startled me. I don't know how many of you have played or are familiar with Yume Niki. But I played it once, and I was playing it like late at night, lights out, you know, and I was wandering the white desert, and this giant weird octopus balloon suddenly showed up and trundled by, and it terrified me. Well, like, I shouldn't say terrified, but it's like startled me very badly. It's apparently called the Taco Husen, or octopus balloon. And, no, it has really low odds of, like, a 1 in 5,000 chance of it actually appearing. So when I told someone else who had been playing the game about it, they didn't believe me because they couldn't get it to trigger in the desert. There we go. No, oh, I've lost again. Take my other medal. I'm off to look for my kid's presents. Oh, now you remember you have children. Ah, oh, the octopus balloon got you too. Boggy with the first class body blocking. What a jerk. Come on. Well, I suppose if you've got all that bulk, you might as well make use of it. Uboa was another startling thing, but I knew about Uboa beforehand. Although, that said, even knowing about Uboa um, is still kind of stressful because it's still low odds of it actually appearing. So you'd still be walking in, flicking the light switch, leaving, walking in, flicking the light switch, leaving. And then BAM! It shows up! And you weren't expecting it, and you jump a mile. Low chance events are scary. Flipping that light switch, you had to close your eyes. Yeah, me too! So I completely get where you're coming from, Claire. I'm getting a little on feathers. Boggy with the first class parenting. It was like, did I see that? Yeah, yeah. That darn octopus balloon. I know Yume Nikki's got a couple of low chance events, but well, I can't. That's the kind of thing though, if I made a game, I would probably program in like some low chance events. Not spooky ones, probably. But just, just odd enough and in uncommon enough that people would see it and try and tell other people about it, and they wouldn't know what they're talking about. Although I suppose in this, like, day and age of data mining, 
I suppose you don't really get to have a surprise like that for long, you know? Rawr. Lubo is the only thing you know about that game. He's thinking about playing it again. You've got it on Steam. Has anyone played the, um, the... It's not a remake. I guess the... Is it a remake? I don't know what you'd call it. The, the 3D version? Oh, hello, Carrie! Wahey! Although you actually just missed the wahey. Not not the fan game. Um, uh, like, not Dot Flow. Is it a fan game? I don't know. It's the one that's like a... In a pseudo 3D side scrolling perspective. Where I go, open Mad Monster Mansion. Did I ever play Owl Oni? No, because I hate being chased. Hang on. When Tootie is a big old lump, I'm just the frock to hide her rump. Okay. I have not played Owl Oni because I can't deal with being chased. I've seen it played. Carrie here has actually streamed Owl Oni. You've played it, or rather, you're surprised you never played it, specifically during your binge of horror indie games like Misao and Mad Father. Have you played The Witch's House, Theta? That one's good. Carrie's also streamed that one. I'm a big baby, so when I'm curious about a horror game, <laughs> I'll ask Carrie to stream it. Hello, Rifam! Welcome. Sorry you missed Wahey. Yeah, to go way back. Oh yeah, this is where Mad Monster Mansion portrait is. Data mining, I think, really ruins the surprise of a lot of stuff these days. I mean, I don't begrudge people for doing it, but I don't like that when it's stuff is data mined, then it's posted everywhere, and you can't avoid it. You know, like, data miners keep it to themselves. They probably try to. I'm sure it's just like a couple people that leak that stuff everywhere. Yeah, have you played Eeb, Theta? Oh, your hatred of dolls comes from Eeb. Well, there you go. For you, you'd create a single cursed physical copy of your game containing some disturbing side content and then sell said copy at a garage sale just to freak someone out and make them feel like they're going crazy. Also, like, Ben Drown, but for real. I think if you want to do a good video game creepy pasta, you just gotta like corrupt it, tilt the cartridge, get some dust in there. Where is the exit again? Probably should have figured that out first before I dove in the water. Ugh. There it is. Yeah, make your creepy pastas real. Live your dreams. I once saw... I played a demo for a game. I don't remember what it was called, but I like the concept of it, that the game world itself was gradually falling apart and getting glitchy, but the writing itself wasn't very good, so I wasn't really into the presentation. But it was a good concept. Okay, I should go to Mad Monster Mansion, but I'm gonna get that Ikenbokum first. If you have a daughter, if you ever take her to a con, you're gonna use blue face paint on her, put her in a red dress, and hand her a pair of scissors. It's a very specific reason to have a child. I know, at a convention once, I saw um, a parent had come with his two daughters. He was dressed up as um, this mascot cat that was from an episode of Azamanga Dayo, this big white cat with a red ribbon. I think, I think that's what he was dressed up as, and he had one daughter dressed up as Chio from Azumanga, and he had a really young daughter dressed up as Yotsuba. Last night you watched someone stream a game that was like a weird absurd parody of all those spooky RPG maker games called Toilet in Wonderland! Mario is logged in! You don't know how often I think about the specific phrase Mario has logged in <laughs> from Toilet in Wonderland. <laughs> uh, Mad Monster Mansion in here. You'll have her cosplay as Bobby Barrows from Clock Tower. Yeah, that's right, Bobby has respectable short shorts. 
Carrie here is a Clock Tower fan, so if there's any other Clock Tower fans in here, well, you're in good company. That's a game you forgot about? You were cracking up at the Mario part? Oh, the Mario part just... It gets me every time. Just his distorted, here we go, and yahoo! With the Mario RPG sprites. Grunty's legs and stomach thins! Goodbye to all those double chins! Okay, ga gate. I gotta break the gate. There we go. Is there anything I can do here yet or no? I don't think so. Yeah, no, there's a little hole in here that I can't get to yet. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just like go into YouTube and type in Mario is logged in, toilet in Wonderland. You'll you'll find a clip of someone playing it. I'm thinking of the Vine Sauce clip specifically, because that's how I first saw it, but Mario was logged in. It makes me crack up. Now you know. Have a good one, Joe. Thank you for joining us. Jo joining us? No. No, that's bad. It's so lonely starting a stage and not having bottles squeak at me. Is there anything back here? No. Some real good tunes here. <laughs> not good bats, though. Ow. You really don't know why, but Sachiko and her mother sprites from the PSP version of Corpse Party don't sit well with you. I read a Let's Play of Corpse Party a while ago. I feel like I talked about this in like a stream forever ago, but what I found most uncomfortable about Corpse Party, well, several things were uncomfortable aside from the horror elements, but like the little sister character that was actually like a teenager but acted like she was six or something didn't sit well with me. Okay, I did. I, I feel like I repeat myself a lot without intending to. Wait. I guess I should just start going in here. These two guests are rather dumb. Let's make sure they're unwelcome. You you really stretching that rhyme there, Grunty. Well, camera. Oh yeah, I can't. I cannot get this. It's just there to tease me. Yeah, acting like she's six when she's 14 years old. Well, yeah, I just smashed that window. What about it? Oh, that's right. You've never played this, have you? Well, I'm smashing windows now. Like, it's what you would do, right? It's what any respectable citizen would do. Yeah, I'm breaking and entering. <laughs> it's just a funny noise. I don't know why. I feel like I should be able to go in here like Mario 64, but no. No, he's back! <laughs> it's still a funny noise, though. No, you go through the door? You can't go through the door. It's locked. Or it's unopenable. See? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> The only thing that bothered you about her was her refusal to go to the bath- to go pee without a toilet. Where's the fun in that? Unless you're breaking down the door. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, there's a sleeping dude there, but you don't- uh, going through the front door doesn't help because as soon as you walk on the floorboards... Who woke Napper while he's sleeping? I can hear someone down there creeping! Then I can't get the jiggy. At least she's not like Dr. Seuss. That guy rammed, rhymed, <laughs> rhymed fafloozle with sesnoozle. In the literary world, that's just cheating. I think he gets to make up his own rules. If you're Dr. Seuss, you probably get to do what you want. I mean, what do you think the doctorate's for? For you, does hurry rhyme with furry? Well, there you go. I suppose hurry does rhyme with furry for me. 
but perhaps in a different regional accent would not. Does it rhyme for everyone else? I think that's everything in here that I can get right now. I think. Rhymes for you too. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot about this stage. This stage has the the filthy tombstones. What filthy tombstones? Uh, you'll see. Or you'll hear, rather. Oh, on that, that painting here. This is Captain, I think, Black Eye. I think his name was. Um, he was the villain for the original concept for the game that would eventually become Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, Dream, I think it was called. He's made some little picture cameos in games, like here, and in uh, Banjo-Tooie as well. I think he's in Jolly Roger's Lagoon. Oh, it's the flower pots that have the potty mouths. It's right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but then you'll you'll hear what I mean shortly. Hang on, there's some windows I haven't vandalized. Let's go. Flower potty mouth. Gurgle bear is much too fat to fit in Logo's mouth. Why would I want to? No, that was that was Banjo Tooie. In Banjo Tooie, you have to use the this drill move to unclog Logo. Yes, the toilet reappears. Why wouldn't the toilet reappear? <laughs> Who gave this toilet sentience? Uh, Gruntilda, presumably. Despite their similar spelling, though, does not rhyme with rough. I think O-U-G-H can be pronounced at least, what, eight different ways in English? Maybe more. Maybe less, but I think at least, at least eight. Yeah, everything in this game has sentience and also googly eyes. You just gotta get used to it. Is there any other windows I haven't broken here? No. Through tough though, or like hiccup. It's only cruel if the toilet isn't a freak. <laughs> I guess you'd have to be a freak to be a sentient toilet. No. Ghosts. Can I break this? I already have 10 of those, I don't need it. Why are you cackling, sir? Nah, stop that. Now I don't have 10. Now I'm gonna get it. How does one get into these rooms normally? I don't see a door anywhere. Maybe breaking and entering is the only way to actually get in. And if the toilet doesn't encounter the great mighty poo. <laughs> Rare hasn't gotten there just yet. Am I gonna do the bottles bonus puzzles? Oh, I forgot about those. Maybe. If I remember to go back and do them. I forget if you have to do anything special to unlock them though. Or if you just go back into Banjo's' house and stare at the photos above the fire fireplace. You still hate Jinjos because of their doppelgangers? You mean Minjos? And Banjo Tooie? And at least they're usually fairly well telegraphed um, as to whether or not they're a Minjo. If they're in a wide open area where they can chase you real good, they're probably a Minjo. There's a pretty good comedian, you forget which European country they're from, but he does a whole set about how the word ass is the most difficult word in all of English. It was a long-ass flight, just means it was a long flight. Oh, you mean like sort of difficult to to translate kind of thing? Oops, sorry, Jinjo. Oh, well, I'm back here now. Uh, I would like to rotate the camera. There we go. Hello, Sea Witch. 
I like that name. It makes me think of um, oh, Watanohara and the Great Blue Sea. I don't know if anyone else is familiar with that game. Cute character designs, though. Grunty's gold! How it's shown! She'll be mad, now it's gone. Yes, I'm mad! My boot, I'll put up your useless spooky butt! These rhymes are subpar today. <laughs> but yes, welcome. When someone says, move your ass, they want you to move your entire body. It is interesting, isn't it? Sort of like, um, again, I don't say it on the stream, but the F word. And how its uses in English might be a little difficult to translate to other languages. And how it works as a, um, what is the word I want? Like a superlative, maybe? Like an emphasizing word? There's a, there's a term, and I can't think of what it is. You're more mad he couldn't rhyme? Maybe I, I just didn't pronounce those British enough. Um, Sean. Maybe I should have said Sean. People pronounce Sean. Maybe it is it's pronounced Sean, and I simply said it wrong. A modifier. That's the word I want. The F word. And even in this, uh, what Rifam's describing, ass gets used as a modifier. Um, and it's kind of a difficult thing to translate. It has more uses in English than Spanish, really. I do recall you saying that because you're Hispanic, you swear a lot. I don't know if that's a universal truth or a theta truth, though. Can I not break this? Here we go. If your butt isn't attached to the rest of your body, then you have a lot of questions regarding your anatomy. Oops, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Nope. No! No, no, I want... <sighs> Darn ghosts. You once read that only cusses are modifiers, too. Badass means you did something good. So it's the opposite of bad, but if someone calls you a dumbass, that means you're really dumb. Language is so fascinating, isn't it? It is pretty common to swear there. I'm, in some ways, I'm kind of surprised that I'm not the sort of person who swears, because my parents, my dad especially, didn't really have many, well, not like swearing like a sailor, but didn't have many bones about it. You know, not censoring themselves around small children, aka me and my brother, but I'm pretty clean-mouthed. Going back to the States, or talking to someone from the States is awkward, because you realize, oh right, you gotta be more formal. So swearing is more common in Puerto Rico, then? Teach us all the fun Spanish swears. <laughs> Not that I'd be able to pronounce them well. Not that I would pronounce them, period. Pew. Among the youths. Okay, here, here is the potty mouth flower pots. Why? Thank you. It doesn't actually sound as bad as I remember, but it sounds a lot like they're saying mm, yeah, "f you." <laughs> Apparently, it sounded even more overt, but Rare had to change it. So I've heard. No, get in there. Come on, get in there. Please. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of eggs. I should've done the blue eggs code. Oh my gosh, please. Get in the pot. <laughs> Why is this so hard? No. <laughs> oh my god, this is the rest of the stream. <laughs> okay, this time. This time for certain. No. <laughs> well, now they're shy, now that I've pointed out their uh, speech impediment. No, it just goes right back in. 
Formal in the U.S.? Not really. Maybe one day someone will address you as sir without also adding, you're making a scene. I realize I only refer to customers as sir when they're getting on my nerves. Not, like, not even to their face. Like, I won't get their attention by saying sir. But if I'm talking about a customer's poor behavior, I will say... I'll, I'll mention sir or something. Ugh. Compared to where you are, Americans are way more formal. You use about a third of the swears, I see. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. No, I don't want first person. I want just a little... Oh my god. I, did anyone else have problems with this back when they played? You know what? Yeah, right back at you, buddy. Ugh. Okay. How many more of these are there? Oh my god. <laughs> Please, you don't remember. Maybe you've blocked it from your memory. Which would be the wisest option. Okay, hopefully this is the last one. After I kill a tombstone, do they get a tombstone? And then I kill that tombstone, and then... It's just a curse upon their family for generations. Oh my god. I was trying to save the egg. Tombception. Yes! Twitch banned the stream for cussing. Oh, there we go. Um, it reminds me, I don't know why, when I was out for a walk the other week, I started thinking about old cartoons and how some of them were really depressing and I think messed me up a little bit. And there was one with Robins where one, like this baby bird gets shot by a kid with a BB gun. And it dies, and all the birds have this elaborate bird funeral for it. And then it turns out it's not actually dead. But it's still, like... That stuff messes you up when you're a little kid. Anyway, that's... Ow! Those lovely thorns, how they've grown! Music to my ears as you moan! Yeah, you're really phoning it in, Grunty. Ugh. For you, your father has always been against swearing of all kinds, or your mother frequently drops F-bombs bombs whenever she's irritated, which is to say very often. Greetings, O oh solid one! I'm Tumblar the Mighty! Solve the puzzle and you can take this infernal thing that's stuck under me! I could just take it now, Tumblar. Maybe you have like a nice whiskey in you? Ugh. This is harder than it looks, because if you touch one of those grunties, you take damage. And it's a little slippery. Where's the J? Wait, everybody's just having a rip and good time here with all the cackling. K, K, K. Uh, a... Here, I think. Let this ghost go by. Excuse me. Is this a Luigi board? Yes. How do I get a Luigi board? Next stream, we find out if Banjo is Pregante. Okay, go, go, go. Look at, look at his pose. Surfing. So apparently in early... Um, builds of Banjo-Kazooie. They actually wanted to have Banjo skateboard. At last, the puzzle is solved. Take this thing. I'm leaving this gloomy shed. 
kind of surprised you didn't rhyme. I expect everyone to rhyme in this game. Your mom didn't even say shut up till you're over 25. I remember I said, Ah, shut up! To my dad once when I was really little because I heard it used in a cartoon and I didn't understand that it was really rude and I got in um, really big trouble for it. That's that's the extent of Mori being a rude girl. <laughs> Okay, let's see. You thought the Z was an N? I get- that's how they get you. Uh, how I get Mumbo. Wasn't he over on the other side of this? Yeah, how I... Oh, I'll take that. It's hard to judge the severity when you're young. Yeah. Especially, you know, when you're just mimicking the adults in your life. So obviously you, you would think that, oh, if the adult can say it, then why can't I say it? Uh, no, retribution will be swift and painful. Get, get in the skull. You got any goodies for me up top, Mumbo? Where's the top shelf stuff? While I'm here with Mumbo, a fun little easter egg is that there's a very, very low chance that instead of being turned into whatever you were supposed to transform into, you will get turned into a washing machine. Um, I've had it happen to me once, ever. Um, apparently there's an even lower chance you'll be turned into a T-Rex, but I haven't had that happen to me. Anyway, let's see what we're gonna be today! Bada 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 bada! Ah, uh, Mumbo proud of pumpkin spell. Make good soup! I'm adorable. I'm a gourd! It's gourd season! Unfortunately, this transformation can't really do anything but hop around and be adorable. Is there something I can only access in this cellar as a pumpkin? I don't remember. I'm pumpkin! It sounds like I'm confusing things with Tui. I mean, that's entirely possible. No, I think the T-Rex the in Tui and the washing machine in Tui um, are, uh, were added sort of in reference to this. Somebody, somebody look it up. Banjo-Kazooie washing machine and T-Rex. Like, it's... I know it's real. I've seen the- I've seen the washing machine happen. What would happen if you put a pumpkin in a washing machine? Probably just a broken washing machine. Okay, I need to climb up top. This doesn't get me- I have to drop down into this, right? Yeah. It's real! Haha! <laughs> See, I'm not crazy. I mean, at least I'm not crazy about that. Yeah, I gotta drop down to get that. Now, how do I get up top? I think there's a route somewhere. Um, let's see. What is in here? Let's find out. Oh, a hedge maze. Goody. With ghosts! I hate these ghosts. They're so persistent. Please. I am but a humble pumpkin. Leave me alone. Ow. I was gonna say I don't even taste good, but that's a lie. I'm probably delicious. No. Maybe I shouldn't come in here as the pumpkin. Because I could get rid of these guys with uh, a Wonder Wing as Banjo, but I can't do anything as a pumpkin. You think you're getting why you don't remember this level at all? It's hard to navigate. As you can tell, I forget my way around it frequently. I could have a map or something. Mm, I know there's a ramp somewhere that will let me get on top of the titular mansion. Egg. Egg. 
egg. Every time I'm saying egg like that, I'm saying it with only one G. Oh, do I have to break that first? Oof. Why can't the pumpkin fight back? I don't know what a pumpkin could do to fight back, but I think it should be able to do something. Oh, I think this opens the church. Egg. Yeah, Boogie gets it. Egg. Like when there's enough eggs sitting around the basket in Salmon Run, but we fail to deposit enough before the wave is over. Egg. Am I crazy? I know there's a way to get up on top of the house. Is the pumpkin. Ugh. Anything this way, maybe? The killer pumpkins and bug fables. Oh yeah, those big old gourds. Oh, I think I need to break this. Is well, uh, no, I'm on the other side of it. Okay. Oh, that's okay. The pumpkin is resistant to whatever goop is in this water. Probably don't want to eat it afterwards, though. I haven't made anything with pumpkin in a long time. I thought about doing it. Um, back when pumpkins are in season. Do I need this egg? Yes, I do. But I waited too long and then pumpkins were out of season by the time I got off my gourd, so to speak, to do it. Uh, waiters, anything else? Oh, there's notes over here. I will take this. You get an egg, and you get an egg, and you get an egg. Everyone gets an egg. But that's not enough for Mr. Grizz. It's never enough for Mr. Grizz. I wonder if we'll get more salmon lore in Splatoon 3. I would like that. Okay, don't get hit by the vines, don't get hit by the vines, don't get hit by the vines. Go in the bucket, go in the bucket. There's Mr. Bucket. Cards pop out of his mouth. Like, I'm surprised we didn't get more salmon lore just with, uh, like, during Splatoon 2's life cycle. Like, especially with, like, the ruins of Arc Polaris. Come on, there's definitely secrets and stuff. Someone has to explain why you have one as a pet. I don't remember. Do you get to name it? Did they show that in the, uh, on the pre-release footage back when they announced it? Because I know you can customize its little mohawk. I can't remember if, you, if it showed you get to name your little buddy. I hope so. Oh, you could see that they could change their hair. Okay, I will hold out hope that you can name your little chum buddy. Probably not. Where the heck is the ramp to get on top of the house? Am I crazy? Where's the room that has the honeycomb piece? I remember my parents, I think like they rented a cable box or something. So we briefly got Cartoon Network and my mom recorded this like 24 hour Bugs Bunny marathon that was going on on, on the Cartoon Network. And I vividly remember a lot of the toy commercials there because they were commercials for stuff that I had never seen here in Canada. I mean, not that I watch a lot of TV anyway, but like, like Mr. Bucket. Or Elephant the Elephant. Or My Buddy. Which were these creepy looking dolls. The graveyard has an opening that the pumpkin can access that leads to the ramp. Thank you! Or, um, well, I was gonna say, like, what the pots say, but no, no, not that. Oh, this is just the entrance. Why am I getting turned around? You remember My Buddy? <laughs> With that stupid jingle? Okay, now that's that's the hedge maze where I will probably get run over if I go in there as a pumpkin. Um, this is not the way to the graveyard. It's not even that big of a level. Why? Okay, here we go. I had, instead of gator golf, I had a crocodile dentist, which terrified me. Not just because um, I'm terrified of dentists, but it was 
um, like a jump scare in a toy, where if you pulled on the wrong tooth, it would its maw would snap shut on you. That's terrifying. I guess I'm supposed to go up here as Banjo and not as the Gorg, but I'm doing it anyway. Can't stop me, I'm a pumpkin. The level just looks extremely tedious. I mean, at least the music's good. Wherever he goes, I go. That is off-key and I don't care to fix it. It's not a stream unless I sing something. Ooh, Ecom Bilgum. You knew about my buddy from the Robot Chicken parody? There's a Robot Chicken parody? I mean, I'm not surprised. Just... Ah! No. Oh, I need to go back up here as Banjo and Kazooie anyway, because there's a jiggy on the very top that I need to climb to. And I can't do it as this little gourd buddy. Okay. Um, let's get a good look in first person. Oh, I wish I could invert the camera controls. Oh yeah, there's the ramp. I see it now. Can I get to it from here? It's kind of hard to see. Well, let's me get on top of the hedge maze. Um, I could probably just jump down to it, honestly. Flat. There was a dream I had. Ah, heck. Can I... Okay, here we go. Um, no, please leave me alone. There was a dream I had a little while ago. That I've been trying to remember specifics from. Um, because it was set up like some obnoxious like uh, extreme sports TV show meant for like what they thought kids would think were cool was cool in the 90s. Well, I can't I can't talk. But point is it had this this lady running this obstacle course wearing like this high-tech armor and she was running the obstacle course in like a high-tech hamster ball and they were trying to sell it as like the latest craze and she did a really sweet jump off a ledge somewhere and said clenched it as like a uh, cool slang for conquered it and I've been trying to remember the specifics of clenched it from that dream for a long time but now it just popped back into my head and I also remember some other guy tried to run the course but he fell off in his little hamster ball very early and and they said uh, instead of like oh you lost you you screwed up they said Yalto which I guess is like a horrible version of YOLO but I don't know what it means <laughs> hi silly no it's not Mario it's well I mean if Mario was a pumpkin yeah, this is Pumpkin Mario. Okay. Jump. There we go. How am I supposed to get up here, like, properly? I thought the hedge maze would lead to it, but I guess not. Ah! Please. Let the gourd up. I really want to rotate the camera, and I can't. That was Yalto, as in, like, like Balto, but with a Y. Oh, there was a hole I missed? Oh. Uh, um, I was probably in, like, the wall somewhere. And I just can't see it. Oh, hello, Cyberfire! Oh, another fan of Banjo, I see. Good taste. Okay, here we go. That's what I want. I also gotta find Logo. Because, I mean, it's not Mario, but we're still gonna do some plumbing. Don't think about it too hard. I somehow didn't look at the exact spot. Oh. That sounds like me. Oh, the first game you remember playing. Gosh, what was the first game I remember playing? It might have been, like, Mario 3. No! Please, Skellington. Happy landings, little one! No, please don't. No. Oh. Ugh. Well, better than Drano to clear the pipes, I guess. You're becoming a full-on Nintendo fanboy? I think Nintendo's a fine thing to be a fan of. 
Heaven knows I've been streaming a lot of Mario content. Is there anything else I need in here? That the camera's hiding from me? I don't think so. I don't know, I don't know why there were vines swinging around down here in the septic system. Don't worry about it. I can't believe you went in there! Now wash your hands, filthy bear! What hands? I'm exonerated. Even that skeleton sounds grossed out. Ugh. Your Xbox broke. Oh. Well, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Didn't Red Ring of Death, did it? Okay, yeah, I've been all the way around. At least Gruntilda follows COVID guidelines. Oh, I just heard Cosmo in the background. Oh, you spilled a water bottle into it. Oh. I mean, it's like a red ring of death and spirit. Pour one out for Cyberfire's Xbox. Preferably not poured out onto Cyberfire's Xbox. Oh, the one S has holes in the top and it got fried. Oh, that would do it. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop being a pumpkin. Actually, I'm thinking... Um, I haven't gotten all the notes yet. There's stuff I need to do outside the level as a pumpkin, but yeah, I've only got 86 notes. Uh, I'm gonna stop being a pumpkin. Where's Mumbo? Well, you're right, Theta. You know what? I don't like this level the more I'm around here because I keep getting turned around, even though it's not that big. F-Box. I'm gonna stop being a pumpkin, Mori 2020 2021. It's not as good as Nuclear Crab Hole, but I'll take it. Not everyone has the privilege to stop being a pumpkin. We must be aware of our privilege. You watched Ice Age 3. Have I seen that one? I've seen the first one. I know sometimes we would put on movies for my mom to keep her entertained. I might have seen bits and pieces of that, but I don't recall. Oops. Get... Get up. <laughs> Watch Ice Age 3. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, that says all I need to know about it, really. Um, let's see. There are shoes up this way to get into the church. I didn't have to knock over that skeleton, but I kind of like the noise they make. It makes me think of rolling dice. Yahtzee. I thought, mm, I thought it was over here. Maybe it isn't? How am I getting turned around at such a small level? Criminy. Yeah, Super Mario 3D World is fantastic. I hope you enjoy it. I have... I, uh, bleh. Did it 100% on the Wii U, and I did it 100% on the Switch as well. And I loved every minute of it! Oh. Okay. I thought I would have to... I could activate it just by stepping on it. There we go. Hang on, let's do this. There we go. Now we fast. Which is the fastest way to the graveyard? I don't think it's this way. No! Stupid skeleton. Okay, hang on. I need to think about my route. Big old door is very tough! Stupid bear, not fast enough! Uh, okay, hang on. I should heal first and figure out my route. Yeah, only 14 seconds. They're, they are uh, very st uh, stingy with the time limits in this game. I mean, I don't think it's as bad as um, the time limit for that one pyramid in uh, Gobi's Valley, but it's still pretty bad. Okay, hang on. The HUD is angry with my skill. How? What did I do to it? Okay, where is the church from here? If I could turn the camera more, it would help. Is it faster to go out this way and then across? 
across to the church, I think. Yeah. Still gonna be pretty tight, though. Let's do it. When I say 100%, does that include stamps? Yes. I guess it's not a true 100%, because if you want all five stars in your save file, you actually have to beat every level with every character. And that would take a long time. So I haven't- I have four sparkly stars in my save file, not five. Okay. Go, go, go. I can't see! Whoa! <laughs> how is everyone? Yeah, I don't think I asked that earlier. Cyberfire beat me to it, but yeah, how is everybody today? I had a nice walk before the stream. I made spaghetti and meatballs. I only had a couple meatballs, though, because they sometimes upset my stomach, so I thought, nah, just a light supper. Um, I wanted to get more done today, but I've been just really tired, which is kind of a shame, you know? I wanted to be more productive during my week off of work, but uh, just sleepy. That's me. Sleepy sheepy. You haven't cooked in so long, you're preparing for a move a month from today. Oh my. I hope it goes smoothly. Mott's hand plays his organ with ease, but can you follow him on the keys? This jiggy always disappointed me because I was hoping for something more musical, but it's really not. Notice when he plays a tone and I play a tone, they're slightly different. Wacky organ. Not bad, bear, but now watch me. Copy this tune and amazed I'll be. Kind of lost the voice halfway through, but that's okay. He's doing the best he can with four fingers. That's fair. Since so many cartoon characters have three fingers and a thumb, do they have to change musical instruments to accommodate? Or is it one of those things you shouldn't think too hard about? Oops, I almost moved off that key. Your music skills are mighty fine, so take this golden piece of mine. Virginia to Florida, goodness, that is a big move. A big change in climate, too. I have been to Virginia, but not Florida. Even Virginia I find very humid, but I suppose because where I'm from, uh, it doesn't rain very often and the humidity is pretty low. So even a little bit of humidity feels like a lot to, oh, to me. No, 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 that was the opposite of what I wanted. <laughs> How can a hand speak and see? Um, well, it could speak through sign language, but the visual component, I got nothing. I hate these ghosts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You were a band kid and fire at piano, well, thank you. I've always wanted to learn how to play the piano, but I've never had the opportunity. We used to have this organ that belonged to my paternal grandfather in the basement, and I used to love noodling on it. And when I was really little, I learned to play stuff by ear. Um, I remember figuring out how to play like the athletic theme from Super Mario World on it. Hang on. No, that is, no, no, no. No, I want Wonder Wing. Woof. There we go. If I ever hear the song Country Roads, that's where you live. Ah, uh, West Virginia. I have seen that song. Not heard it, but just seen people write out lyrical parodies of it so often that I don't know if I'd be... If I could recall the actual lyrics if pressed. Country Gnome, Take Me Home. 
Okay. Um, I need to go up to the top of the church as well, but I think I accessed that from the outside. If memory serves? Maybe. I don't remember now. I should probably make sure, actually, before I run off. Because then I would have to run into the door again, and I don't want to do that. Okay. Well. Wait. Maybe I can get up the top from here. Jiggies do not boot you to the hub like in Mario 64, thank goodness. Which is good because uh, um, the notes that you're collecting only count for that visit to the world and that life. So even though I have 92 notes, if I were to leave the world or die, my note count would go back to zero. Uh, they changed it for the uh, Xbox Live Arcade port, I believe. So then you keep your notes even if you die. That would be so mean, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think the other four notes I need are in the hedge maze, or maybe above me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, is there anywhere else I can get up here? 99 notes accidentally grab a jiggy. I know there's a mod for Mario 64 out there that has a bunch of features you can toggle, including, aha, uh -huh, letting you stay inside the level um, after getting a uh, star. Although I think you might still have to leave the level and come back because certain stars are based on um, the mission you choose at the beginning because it affects certain things appearing in the level, like say Koopa the Quick. What did that do? Uh, so the jiggies are what I need to open levels in this game. There's 10 jiggies per level, including 10 in the hub area. Um, the notes are what you need to collect to open doors in the hub area. Um, there's 100 in each world, um, but if you leave the level or die before getting all 100, then it just saves your best note score. So if I get 50 notes and then die, my note score for that stage is 50. Um, and that's how much will be counted towards the doors that I have to open. So if I wanted 100, I would have to get all ha <laughs> 100 notes in one go. Oof. Uh, now I have to get down from here without dying to fall damage. Remind you of DK64 with how many collectibles there are. Thankfully, this is a lot more reasonable than Donkey Kong 64. And I think in that game, Rare realized, okay, maybe this is too many. Okay, there we go. Fall damage in this game is no joke. <laughs> Wonder Feather down. I don't- does that actually work? Or are you just saying that so I'll Wonder Feather down and lose all my life? Donkey Kong 64 is the Kaizo of collectibles. You're not wrong. I mean, again, there's I've talked about DK64. There's good parts in Donkey Kong 64, but there's just so many arbitrary limits to what you can and can't pick up based on what Kong you're controlling. And uh, I also hate Beaver Bother. <laughs> I've already done that rant. Ooh. What do you mean I can't pick up this blue banana if I'm not lanky? What the heck? Welcome to bonus stage! Ugh. Flashbacks. Flashbacks. Okay. Where are the last notes I'm missing? I thought they would be in here. Are they not in here? I think the last jiggy is on top of the, the, the church. Is there a difference between a church and a chapel? Is it the size of the building? Oh my gosh. I thought they would be in here. Lanky is blue. He can only collect blue things. Well, in the world of Donkey Kong 64... Oh, there they are. I guess that makes perfect sense. Yeah. You found all a hundred notes on this world. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Walnuts, peanuts, pineapple smells, grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. Oh yeah. Come on, Cranky, take it to the fridge. Could I recite the entire DK rap right now? Uh, I could. Would you want that? No. 
And what you can tell- Ah, no, 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 that's not what I want. <laughs> a chapel is a church with a single room. Oh. Okay, so it is based on the size. That was the worst intro ever. It was also the best intro ever. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the DK rap. Come on, Cranky. Take it to the fridge. No! <laughs> Even Kazooie is not impressed. Spyro is the most balanced collect-a-thon. See, that's the one I never played, because I never had a PlayStation. So, you know, I was... We were a Nintendo household. So everything I played was Nintendo. I didn't get a PS2 until late in its life cycle. Okay. Y'all didn't smash in the Donkey Konga bongos. You know what? I'm sad that I never tried. Because I do have a pair of bongo controllers. Okay, now I need to be a pumpkin. We will resume the shape of pumpkin. Can I sing the unused version of the DK rap? I didn't know there was an unused version. I do know that Donkey Kong originally had, like, an actual shotgun. Until Miyamoto-san saw it and was horrified and designed the coconut gun. Now I need to be a pumpkin, Mori 2021. <laughs> we will have freedom from this level momentarily, but here's a snack for the road. So they're finally here, performing for you. If you know the words, you can join in too. Put your hands together if you wanna clap as we take you through this monkey rap. Huh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Thankfully, Andorra reminded me to break the gate. So it's not going to be like the boulder after Bubble Gloop Swamp where I have to leave and come back. Uh, the gate is this way. Jed, you probably call it an evening soon, but I want to open the next level before I do that. Is Rusty Bucket Bay next? Roar. I think that's pretty good progress. Another three worlds down. Hello, surprise. It's Mumbo. In this uh, crypt for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The more records of the weird stuff I say, the better. Oh good, Rusty Bucket Bay is next. Something fun to look forward to on Tuesday. I hate these ghosts. Stop it. There's Rusty Bucket Bay and Click Clock Wood. I think, are the last two remaining. The Click Clock Wood, I think, is very involved because of the seasons. Um, so you have to go in and out of the level quite a bit. And I'm gonna have to remember where everything is. And hopefully not get myself killed before I get all the notes, because that would be very sad. Hang on. We're... Oh, right, I have to turn back into a pumpkin. Oh, that's okay, there's... What? When I'm nice and slim once more, burgers, fries, and chips galore! I mean, this is a UK game. Are not fries and chips the same thing? Pumpkin making mumbo hungry. Me get pot ready. No, please don't. I mean, with Kazooie, though, then you have, like, a protein to go into your pumpkin soup. He's the leader of the bunch. You know him well. He's finally back to kick some tail. <laughs> Is there just a DK rap recital going on in the chat now? His coconut gun can fire in spurts. If he shoots ya, it's gonna hurt. He's bigger, faster, and stronger too. He's the first member of the DK crew. <laughs> Yeah, and chips are a different thing from- Crisps! Oh! <laughs> yeah. Crispy pumpkin! What's wrong, Banjo? Is it tough? Let me know when you've had enough! <laughs> I still have nine lives. I guess when you collect excess, it just vanishes, but it's still there. 
<laughs> Roasting the pumpkin for Mumbo. <laughs> well, that's what I get for reading the chat, but it was totally worth it. I could not have timed that better. Uh, that is actually my second death, but my first one was due to... There were some graphical glitches um, in uh, Clanker's Cavern, where the camera started wigging out and seeing double, and I drowned. It was not pretty. So that was, I think, the first death entirely due to my own stupidity. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. My own, my own negligence, and not the game wigging out. Cheeto Bear and Bird have found once more another spell they get. If one more page I see you turn, then Grunty shall Cheeto burn. Nasty witches, so code I shall tell. Enter red feathers on sand castle floor in treasure trove cove. And you cannot enter these codes without Cheeto telling them to you. So even though I know the last code, which is surprise gold feathers, it won't work. Until it has been endorsed by the book. <laughs> no, if you watch the recording, although be mindful if you have photosensitive epilepsy. Because the screen does wig out real good. <laughs> another statistic, another roasted pumpkin. Technically, Banjo-Kazooie didn't die. It's just a pumpkin. Revolting Gruntilda's bedroom has smelly socks hanging from the ceiling. She also has a loogie brush growing in a loogie bush growing in a pot beside her bed. Tootie says she's fine with me. If you go home, I'll set her free. And you'd be sick if you saw her enormous spotty purple undies. What's wrong? With spotted purple underwear, huh? Rintilda, I think you need to stop shaming your sister. I mean, she's a little gross and unwashed, but who hurt you, Rintilda? How it's canon Banjo and Kazooie found Cheeto and Grunty made good on her word. Oh, that's right! Yeah, Cheeto is ripped to shreds in Banjo Tooie. Well, she didn't really make good on her word, she didn't burn him. Close enough, I guess. You're surprised how much smaller and the quicker the worlds are in this. Compared to Tui, I'm guessing? Because the worlds in Tui are much larger and more expansive. And there's a lot more backtracking you have to do. Since, um, you know, aside from a couple instances in bubble or not bubble gloop freeze easy peak and Gobi's valley you don't have to go back and forth between worlds to uh um get all the jiggies but in banjo 2 you have to do a lot of it banjo is in the pumpkin this whole time get out next you're gonna tell me kazooie was in his backpack Hang on, I'm gonna get these feathers, actually. Oop, excuse me. You wouldn't burn what acts like a Necronomicon in Banjo-Kazooie. You've seen what happens in Corpse Party. Corpse Party, I mostly remember, aside from all the unsavory stuff, was the incredible, like... You know the old trope of, like, police officer two weeks from retirement? get shot on the job. Corpse Party was that. I mean, if, if you have any familiarity with it, you know what I'm talking about. I'm right. In Tui, you spend an hour exploring some worlds twice all over, and you find one jiggy total in the time. It's all about the journey, though. I enjoyed the journey in Tui. Okay, um, let's get to Rusty Bucket Bay, which I think is upstairs. Okay, to clarify in Corpse Party, from what I remember, I read a Let's Play of it forever ago. Um, some, uh, there's a girl transferring to a new school, and, uh, another girl and all their friends get together and do this little ritual for good luck. And they all take the arms of this paper doll. Was the doll called Sachiko? I don't remember the details. But anyway, they're supposed to do a ritual for good luck. 
ow, but they screw it up and then everybody winds up in this haunted, cursed murder school. And uh, I know the girl that was supposed to be transferring away, I'm pretty sure, dies horribly. So it's like, you were almost free. A uh, corpse party is... it's a... <laughs> it's a monster match, that's right! Um, it was a video game, I think originally done on the PC, and then ported a bunch. I think its first English release might have been on the PSP? I don't remember. Um, I can't personally recommend it. I read a Let's Play because I was curious about the story, but I found it was too uncomfortable for my blood. You might enjoy it, though. I don't want to poison the well, so I won't say why it wasn't my thing. Oh, the doll represents Sachiko. There we go. Could not remember. There's an anime? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Grunty's plan is rather cunning! When I'm thin, guys will become- will come running. Oops. They didn't screw it up technically. The girl who published the ritual intentionally gave the wrong instruction so a lot of people would go to the school. Oh, what? Reporter Chan? I don't remember her name. I poisoned the harbor. That's right. It's me. It was all me. Oh, we have a shortcut. How nice. Oh, uh, the girl was already possessed and haunted by Sachiko. <laughs> the guys won't come running. Oh, no, they won't. Oh, yeah. Have you have you seen the Game Over cutscene, silly? I haven't actually shown it on stream. Because I last time I just made a save state. But I can show the Game Over cutscene before we quit for the evening. Um, can I break this at all? Yeah. Uh, the Game Over cutscene plays when you run out of lives, but also if you just save and quit. I don't know why. Here we go. I'll do it for science. There it is. But we're gonna do that on Tuesday. I'm just gonna check what's at the other end of this hallway, because I don't remember. And then Tuesday, Rusty Bucket Bay. Brace yourselves. Grunty wins and gets the good look she desires, as well as a seductive voice. You actually have to see it, though. Is there anything useful here? Oh. I don't know if anything appears here, or if that's just showing you... Oh, hey, Mad Monster Mansion's picture is over there, if you missed it. Do guys come running? I think Klungo comes running. I might be misremembering, though. I'm surprised these bees can thrive in this dingy little tunnel. Oh, Mumbo comes running. That's okay. Somebody came running with flowers. Couldn't remember. Okay. So, I'm, I'm gonna save state here just for convenience's sake. Because otherwise, if I were to reload the game, I'd have to walk back through Grunty's lair. And now I'll show you what happens when you save and quit. So this is identical to the game over screen. Joe's game ends in my tower. Turn it up, I need full power. Yes, your grunty ship. Transformation soon be complete. Help me, Banjo! I feel all funny. Baron Bird finished. Grunty wins. Onichan is failed. Look at Grunty, she's a beauty. I'm much prettier than Tootie. Oh, you are, mistress. Grunty, nice. Come back to Mumbo Skull, yes? Banjo, your sister wants a word with you. Now. Rar. <laughs> Onichan has failed. It does make Tootie more interesting, doesn't it? Well, there you go. So yeah, that's that's the uh, the saving quit slash game over screen. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. It was a blast, as always. I'll catch you on Tuesday for Rusty Bucket Bay. So brace yourselves. I'm gonna munch. I'm gonna crunch. You never want to see that again. I'll make sure I don't get a game over. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.